Listen. YouTube friends. Hey, I'm going to sling out a quick one. Um, I've done a lot of topics on my uh, weekly, semi-daily, whatever uh, posts. This one, uh, and I've done some in the past, Fun Friday, joke of the day, yeah, not today. Today I want to sling it out because it's uh, in high profile right now. It's in a lot of the news. Divorce. This comes from an individual that has had multiple divorces. I've been divorced twice. So I sort of know what it's about. Though, what does that mean, you know, nowadays? Well, there's a lot of aspects to it. There's uh, aspects that are related to a male and a female partnership, relationship, or a male and a male, or a female and a female relationship that for some reason or another, uh, it's determined by one party or both parties not to move forward. Divorce, right? Starts with a separation maybe, and you can have legal separation for a period of time, and you can make a document about that separation, right? Because if you are in some state of union, and you've got to look at the laws of the states, there's common law, meaning that after a specific period of time of cohabitating together, you're in some type of relationship that has binding structure. The material you have around you, the assets that you accumulate, Weird stuff, the friends that you make, your, your pets, all that kind of stuff. And that's between two people. Male, female, male, male, female, female, whatever. LGBTQ, P, I, T, Elemento, P, Q, R, S, T, V, right? So um, we just saw Jeff Bezos and his wife show up on the news. And the immediate headline read, oh, okay, his wife, what's her name, Mitchell, Michelle, whatever. She's going to get $141 billion dollars. Because it seems like 141 is half of the 282 that Jeff Bezos is worth through his corporation, Amazon, and whatever else he's created, his Goliath of Companies, which I think Goliath Company was the name of that uh, company that uh, the blonde and the other guy, ah, maybe not. I don't know who that was. They were a fixer upper or a flipper or something like that. Um, Goliath company, badass. So Bezos is huge, right? So they immediately stated that his wife gets half. Um, but again, divorce between two people. That's what a divorce is. And it used to be between a man and a woman, formally. And nowadays it's between any two people. As I said, I've had two. There are legal ramifications just between the two of you, varying by state. Um, there are federal components that are tied to that. Taxation, things of that nature, declarations. There are um, personal components that are tied to that. Your relationship, your families, all of that, your pets. If you bring a family in, and when I said families, I mean your extended families. If you bring in children, it's dramatically different. Dramatically different. And uh, that's when often in normal situations, not a Jeff Bezos, though no different, just more money and more asset, more lawyers, longer period of time. And it seems like they uh, uh, provided a formal statement that they love each other, they'll continue to raise their children. They had a period of separation with experimentation, but now you're seeing uh, raunchy texts, you're seeing nude photographs from Bezos and some woman that clearly he had some type of relationship with. Benounced to his wife or unbeknownst to his wife. Um, and we saw the transformation of Jeff Bezos. He was a skinny, nerdy guy that started this Amazon book company that was online, right? And it exploded into this Goliath that it is today, the largest company on the planet just about. Um, bigger than many, many countries, uh, you know, budgets and expenses and, you know, net worth. It's unfucking real. But divorce comes in a lot of uh, shapes and forms and it ties in a lot of different components. And my immediate statement to anyone is before you ever pursue a divorce, ensure that you personally have exhausted all of the avenues you've spent 
days, weeks, months of consideration personally, not with your partner, not with your family, not with your friends, not with your parents, not to your pet pig, to little Rika, my beautiful Rottweiler, personally within your own mind and not psychosis style. I mean, effective, non-emotional, calm period after your you know, immediate surprise of a spouse, a partner that uh, is unfaithful or is bad with money or you've just grown apart with or you've realized you never had connections with. Any of the things that can be stated, irreconcilable differences, just uh, you know, a lack of uh, growing together, growing apart, whatever, abandonment. And as I was saying earlier, um, that's why you, you can legally separate for a period of time because as partners, if one partner leaves the other partner after there is some type, type of legal binding, the statement of abandonment can occur and, and it can be filed in a court in a, in a jurisdiction that the one spouse was abandoned by the other and therefore as abandoning, and it comes with a time frame, 30, 60 days, whatever it is, the individual that was abandoned then declares ownership of assets and it, it gets weird, dude. And that's what it all comes down to. That's what divorce is about. Divorce has nothing other than damages related to it. And a part of those damages, which is hypercritical, probably paramount, the most critical is the damages to the offspring that you now have and share or don't share because one spouse is abandoned, right? Super, super critical. Child court, children's dependency court, all of those civil components in divorce and then the child welfare, critical. And they're separated, right? Um, not criminal at all, but they're separated from just the regular divorce process between two people. The welfare of those children is paramount and it's equally addressed, whether it's through child care payments, what type of lifestyle that child has, the provisioning of the child's um, growth through their whatever period, if it's an infant, if it's a child, if it's an adolescent, the period of support for that child, the scheduled visitations, the primary or secondary uh, parenting uh, of that child. If there's a primary caregiver or if uh, the child's gonna live between both parents, where they'll live, how they'll live, everything, right? It gets really complex. And the states and the, the, the courts, the judiciary systems have tried to do a good job of it, but they're not parents. But unfortunately, they are parents to millions and millions of children because adults are broken adults and should never have been allowed to have children. Whole nother discussion that we'll have in the future on one of my uh, you know, presentations, on one of my podcasts. Um, the ability to have children without law governance. Anyone can have children, as many as they want. How can that be? And we have nothing that manages that. We have these secondary systems that support the, the error, that support the damage. How can you ever call a child an error? Dude, come on. It's one of the pandemic issues on this fucking globe. Women impregnated, spewing children out without the ability to care for themselves. Globally, first world, second world, third world. Right? And it doesn't tie to money, and it doesn't tie to location, and it doesn't tie to culture, it doesn't tie to anything. In any place in the world, a person, a female, often raises a child through brutality, with love, with all the things that she can provision, right? Or a male, in rare times. Men have no concept of childbirth. They can't. We've never had them, right? So, I'll move away from that. But they're a critical, critical part of divorce. And so, as I was saying, both partners have to really contemplate, review, plan, discuss, make lists personally within themselves and then with the person that you're now moving through this process with. Initially sharing your position with them, discussing their position with you, just determining whether or not, and here's my statement to everyone, whether or not it's reconcilable. And I would say to almost everyone, try to pursue reconciliation with that person, regardless of what you have, what your assets are or anything.
for some reason you are with that person and if it has been for any real term, not a couple days, couple weeks, couple months, if you've spent time with that person and you've shared memories, happy, sad, exciting, uh, angered, jealous, um, you know, active, uh, calm, all those things you do with a person in a relationship, you have to assess why you're moving through this next transition. It cannot be impulsive because we're creatures of habit and you'll have it and you'll repeat that again, right? So you have to really do analysis and this is growth as a human and as a, uh, a, a mature, um, reproducing, uh, able, intelligent adult, which we're lacking a lot of these days, right? Why am I in the spot I'm in? And what do I have to do? And what can I do? What have I done? Assess all of that and then discuss that excessively, calmly, clearly. And that's the issue I suffered with, calm. Um, in my first marriage, I was too young uh, and I hadn't had much experience in life. And I probably just let it happen, which is unfortunate because I have two great kids from it. They're wonderful. Their mother's raised are my children. She's done a, a brilliant job. The kids are awesome. And I've been a paycheck. And I've tried to, I've seen them on occasions, right? But no presence. The kids don't know me. Uh, it is what it is. They don't care to know me. They have their family, their immediate family, my wife, my ex-wife, her mother that raised them, and then all those people around them. And they're functioning, and they're able, and they're great, and they're educated, and they're loving, and they're caring. Outstanding job. Uh, and it was monumentally unbelievable because their, my ex-wife sacrificed quite a bit and fortunately had a mother that assisted her in raising those kids. Um, and, there, you, you know, hindsight's always twenty twenty. if I look back at it. And personal insight. I've spent time now with graduations and things, children are grown. And it clarified to me that I had made the right move. Rather than sacrifice my child's, my children, my two children's welfare and growth and development and happiness, I removed myself from the situation um, because I don't think I would have been healthy. It would have been destructive, tumultuous, unhappy. Um, and when I visited and I experienced what went on, I knew that I had made the right decision. Seeing how healthy they were, seeing how the well that their lifestyle, how well they did, seeing that a uh, vast majority of that was from my ex-wife and from her mother and that environment, seeing how I am and how I know I operate and how I would not have done well in that world. And it would have been extremely difficult through my early period, because this happened 20, 22, 25 years ago, into my adult, you know, my real growth in adult period where I matured and I wasn't a, you know, 22 year old retard or 25 year old idiot. And even to where I've grown now, it would have been very, very difficult. I regret not having many more experiences with those kids, but I'm so proud of them and they're awesome. Um, and so I know that I've seen from experience that me not being there was the best thing for their welfare, but it took a lot. And probably that was not the approach that I took. I did not do the you know extensive self-analysis that's needed. And then trying to figure out if you can repair this because there's nothing more destructive than the divorce with angry feelings, with the whole human emotional spectrum that occurs afterward. And then the legal spectrum that occurs that ties in the financial spectrum the ties in the social, the you know economic, the uh, psychological, the physiological, all those aspects. It's brutal between two people, but can be quickly healed, right, through time. When you tie children in, it's never healed. It has to exist, it has to continue. You have to foster better, different changes, feelings, interactions. Even isolation, where you disappear and you never see them again, it may work for you as the individual that is leaving, but that microcosm of a family still suffers. They're missing a parent. They have to, they have to heal that scar. The children will always have some kind of question. How come dad wasn't around? What happened? Was it me, right? Because those questions aren't answered. And 
the other parent, the mother, whatever, or the father, has to interpret. And they try to do that with calm, without damage. Dude, single parenting is never better than dual parenting. Um, other than in violent or neglectful or you know brutal environments. And any environment's better when a child is being physically, emotionally, socially abused, right? Um, and or a spouse, domestic violence. And I struggled with that thought how a woman primarily forms such a bond with a person allowing that person to physically abuse them and yet there's still a connection where they return. I don't have that in me. Um, and therefore I can't understand it, but I try to understand it and it's gotta be brutal. There has to be um, portions of that person's psyche of their environmental modifications, their behavior that have put them in such a strait, their confidence, their upbringing, their family interactions, their social skills, all those things where they're missing key components to allow them to have to live in an environment like that. I've never agreed with domestic violence. Um, you know, I have, I have every thought that a female should pound a male into dust. Yeah, you're gonna do that to me, I'll pound you back. Which is why I still struggle with a lot of these things nowadays, the hashtags, you know, the me too's and all this other crap. How does a person let themselves be subjugated and neglected and beaten and abused? Fuck you. Dreams are big, money's important, I want to be, you know, powerful and successful and maybe it's something else, maybe it's a psychosis. I want to be loved, I want to feel needed, I want to be noticed. Uh, who knows, right? A lot of things. The, the human psyche, mind and behavior is complex. But back to divorce, um, review in depth for a period of time whether or not it's the right move and then share that with your partner calmly not argument if you can't argue get a mediator get a mediator who can then control your conversation don't argue back and forth for days weeks months years realize quickly i cannot talk to this individual share that with them i don't communicate well with you for some reason i become extremely emotional i become extremely reactionary I react too quickly. I don't think things through. Can we get a moderator? Can we get a friend? Can we get anyone to intervene so that we can talk in a factual, calm, rational manner? If you lack rationality, you will not make good decisions. Done. That's a fact. So you have to put this into a rational perspective with you and your partner and discuss your personal relationship because your personal relationship is the glue that holds anything together. The you and me, not the pet, the you, me, and the dog, the you, me, and the, the pot belly pig, the you, me, and our mom and dads and our families, the you, me, and our children, our son, our daughter, our son, 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 our daughter, our daughter, daughter, whatever. It's the you and me. If that cannot succeed, that relationship will not work. And either you make a decision with that partner where it won't work and you'll continue to coexist, and that's rare, it's very difficult to cohabitate, co coexist with someone in the same environments when you're not in a relationship, emotional, social, physical, sexual relationship, yet you have offspring or you have assets or you have environments, friendships and worlds and bubbles that you have to manage, very difficult. Few people can do that. But that's what you have to look at to determine whether or not you need to proceed forward. And it's easy to talk about factually and intellectually and then to tie your laws in. California is the most progressive divorce state. It's the most progressive relationship state in the union, the far west. It will make radical changes and then they slowly migrate across the country. Hit Colorado maybe about six, eight, ten years later as it deals with, um, you know, your uh, children, your dependents, as it deals with your asset, as it deals with your relationship, as it deals with your sexuality, right? And then it slowly migrates eastward. So when you look at California divorce law, civil law, family law, uh, dependency courts, all those things, they're probably the most radical in the country setting standards. I think they just came out with new changes, right? Where it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, it's a 50-50 split anymore. You can't have a spouse 
who states that they're completely dependent on the other spouse. Thus, based on a formula, an algorithm, some type of calculation, I pay 80%, you pay 20% because that's the lifestyle we were in. Nope, 50-50 anymore. We're getting divorced. You can be the president and you can be a stay at home whatever and we're 50-50 splitting this. The house, the monies, the retirements, the assets, the children, everything. That's how it sort of starts anymore. But the whole country is not like this, and I stated, it's run in a state-by-state -state manner. And the dependency ages of children, right? 17, 18 in some states. Additional dependency through college, up to 21, up to 23 if they live at home and they're continuing their growth in education until they're able to live on their own and that dependency can continue that child support payment and then the almighty alimony with the changes that we just brought up in the last podcast all that alimony that i used to pay you or you used to pay me i could claim that payment i made as taxable meaning i applied that to the income i made and it reduced that uh, taxable income not anymore just like child support now it's money gone we appreciate you working hard and making it and then paying it to the person who deserves that determined by the court due to your separation and divorce from this individual it's gone can't claim that as anything taxable reducing any gross income doing anything that's a circumstance of the situation you put yourself in so divorce is brutal and needs to be really thoroughly reviewed by both parties and really thoroughly determined if it is the only and last resort. Often there's cheating or there's other relationships. Dude, relationships are growing together or they're growing apart. There's no stability. There's no coexistence. If there's coexistence by one party, they're usually comfortable. There's often the other party who's not comfortable. They're working a lot. They're having relationships with their co-workers, relationships where they're just hanging out, maybe going after work drinking. I have sales events I have to do. I travel a lot, right? Uh, I'm at work late. I have a lot of deliverables. I'm important there. Before you know it, they're spending more time in that environment that they are at home, and you, everyone knows what happens. You become distant from your home life, and that becomes your life. That provides you with your happiness, your sadness, your fulfillment, your time consumption, your humor, everything. That's a factor of living. And those are the sacrifices you have to make. And individuals that state that I were, you know, and I point any of them out. And it's not fair. It's a generalization. But Mark Wahlberg or Dwayne The Rock Johnson or Donald Trump or any of these people. I am a great uh, professional and I am also the best family man. You're the best family man because of what you provide in your mind. Lots of money, lots of material, lots of toys, a great house, uh, fucking wait, wait staff, um, properties around the world, great vacations, lots of great food, good clothes, lots of play dates, uh, all that. Are you the best father? Do you play with me? Do you interact with me? Are you present and everything? Individuals that are completely interactive and take full ownership of a child's life and upbringing and also do that at work are extraordinary and they are rare. But there's some of them out there. I've met them. Some people that in some way, shape, or form raise their family. They are a contributing parent, yet they have a full-time job somewhere else that they also integrate their schedule in. And um, Chris Collinsworth, on the NFL, on uh, Fox or ESPN, whatever he does the commentary for. Um, the coach from the Pittsburgh Steelers that spits a lot. Can't remember his right name right now. You guys will love him. Coach Cowell, right? Cowell? Yeah, whatever. Um, these guys, they had like small families, the atomic family, well, a boy and a girl or two girls or whatever. They made every one of their sports games, yet they had hectic schedules. They'd go to a Super Bowl, they'd announce the Super Bowl or coach in the Super Bowl. That night, they'd fly home from wherever that Super Bowl city was and watch their child play basketball the next day. That's not extraordinary. It's parenting. But it's viewed as extraordinary because that's not what the majority of people do. They go to the Super Bowl. That They celebrate with their players. Da, da, da. They hang out there. They come home. How was your basketball? Because the Super Bowl and the NFL and stardom are their lives, and they don't really share that with family. 
Few people have the ability to spread that much activity and love, interaction, participation, the tenacity, the discipline, the wherewithal, the uh, ethical and the moral structure in place to say, yeah, that's a job, I make a lot of money, and I'm a superstar, but this is my family and they're primary. There's not a lot of people like that, but it's not fair to say that there aren't people like that, that sacrifice all the time, live successful lives in one world, and raise a great family. And those are the extraordinary people that have made this country. And you have to recognize that with all these weird things going on nowadays, DACA and all these immigrants and all these single parents and all these foster children and neglected and starving and hungry and all that, in, in these huge numbers, thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of children, right? And all these families. Dude, we still have a mass component of our population that successfully raises, educates, loves, teaches, mentors, provides example with, protects their children. And while it's brutally hard, and we often think, fuck it, throw it away, you always have to come back. And I've learned that, not in my first divorce, that's why I left, and I did a terrible job. My second divorce, differing circumstances, and a nightmare with the ex spouse, but a beautiful daughter. I have a beautiful daughter that makes my world, makes my fucking world. She's awesome. And there's influences that are evil around her. And she's still, she's got half a mind. And she's a badass. She's smart. And she's, she, you know, questions. And she's inward. She's quiet. She's going to be successful. She's going to have lessons that she's got to learn. And she's got bad influences, evil influences from other areas. But she ain't stupid, man. So I can't wait to see where she goes. And I miss not raising her. But I've raised two children that aren't my own and done that successfully, and they're awesome. And I finally learned at 49 years of, old, uh, years of age, divorce is brutal. But if it's the thing that has to occur for your own personal welfare and sanity, and you come to that assessment before you ever share with your partner that this is how it's proceeding, or this is how it has to proceed, or you have forced me to proceed this way, tell me differently, right? Why did you do what you did? Why did we do what we did? Why have we grown apart? Can we repair that? Then you have to proceed, and it is life-altering for everyone involved for the rest of your time on this planet. So don't move lightly through it. Um, get a lawyer. Get counseling. Don't try to do it on your own, even if you're broke. You can find lawyers that will assist you in the process. You can find counselors that will counsel you for free. Um, if you're not of an income level, don't rely on family, don't rely on friends. It's a personal decision that you have to live with. Your family and your friends are never going to be a part of it. Even if they're a close-knit family, they're going to have a percentage of it. You and that person, you and your, uh, you and your partner's offspring, assets, they're your own. So, I mean, brutal process. We're seeing it now and often, you know, Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, uh, it gets ugly and brutal. A lot of these, um, Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie, a oh, storied couple. They t people turn evil and there's no need for that. And I finally learned that. That's wisdom and age because when you're full of fire and anger and uh, I was wrong and I'm right and I don't act that way, why did they do that to me? And then why did I do that to them? And oh, do I have a problem? Maybe I'm broken. All those things. It's part of growth and living and you gotta figure that out. It would be best to address those now so that you don't encounter this again. I've gone through two divorces. I'm a social misfit. I'd behoove you to not be a social misfit. Work harder, work smarter, learn, grow socially through with relationships um, and it will benefit you because ultimately in this world in life we're not meant to live alone few few of us are we are social creatures you have to spend time in and around and with communities and people Con contributions 
You're consuming things from them. You're contributing things to them. This is a contribution, right? I feel compelled to contribute. Nobody has to watch it, consume it, but I feel like I'm contributing. That's what we do. We don't sit isolated in a bubble. Few of us do. And some of us mail bombs in the mail to other people. You're up in a fucking cabin in Washington, right? Washington State sending bombs out like the Unabomber. Bip. You're in a cave. Even my man in a cave over there had porn, had wives all over the place, dragged his little dialysis machine around, had fucking extended family all around his compound. Dude, the worst of us don't live alone. Life is not meant to be alone. And unfortunately, divorce is a massive part of our society. Two thirds, right? Even higher. So we have to learn to coexist and live in love, especially for those most impacted innocently by our divorce, our children, our families, our pets, whatever. Um, I wanted to share that. I wanted to be out there, work hard, try harder. Um, and that's what I've tried to understand. And it's taken 30 years to do that. And it's been brutal. But it's worth it to finally understand how to be a contributing, loving, trying to function adult, right? Regardless of the situations you're in. I don't have to like some people, but I still have to deal with them. I still have to work with them. I still have children with them. I have to love. I have to love my child. And it's not a have to. I love my children. They're awesome. They're beautiful. They're part of me. Even though I didn't biologically, uh, I didn't, uh, you know, I, I, uh, location wise and um, you know presence wise raise them they're still awesome humans and I'm very proud of all of them and I'm very thankful for my uh, ex-spouses for whatever they've done even though I dislike one of them badly Eesh. doesn't matter so just some considerations on a really ugly topic that I wanted to share after all this crap in the headlines uh, you know it's tough when you have to split your $282, million, uh, billion, uh, $282 billion. Money's not even relevant, man. Can you imagine the nightmare of that dude separating his life from that lady? Shit everywhere. His companies, his popularity, his, his, uh, oh, what a mess. So I wish that on no one. I hope that goes well for them. We'll see. God bless. I hope some of this helps.